This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. Shake for fire. Sway in the morning. It's going down. We gotta make this thing clear. Gotta make this thing clear. I don't sing, but somebody told our next guest that this is the best stop on the on the tour. So I'm just I'm trying to sing, dance. Do it up. You're doing a good job so far. Got that black boy joy. It's mm. amazing. That you like that? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Thought you cringed right there um, when I did that. A little that. bit. It did? Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt your feelings right at the start of the show because <laughs> you might just treat me so bad Ooh, for the rest of it. The so I'm just like. <laughs> but I appreciate your honesty, Frida. Yeah. That's what this show is all about. Right. Just That's what we just honest. said. We just being. Just being, you yeah. know. And honestly, <laughs> normally I do the introductions, but we have someone here who's such a huge fan of yours. And he's our movie expert. Okay. And there's no She was looking in the wrong direction. I know. Yeah. She was looking at Tracy. <laughs> she was like, I'm Hazard, kind of Tracy. In, this is terrible if I'm like insulting everybody. I apologize. No, no, no. no. That's how we get. We insult each other too. Okay, this cool. is DB, Frida. And he's, DB, can you do that? Well, I introduced myself as Devin, so that's why she probably was wondering. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. You gave that's it a true. sophisticated name. Yeah. You know. Okay. Give him MFB, a DB, yeah, come on. Okay, okay, All right. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah. All right. You know her from Rise of the King of Thieves. You know her from the 81st Academy Award winning Best Picture Slum Dog Millionaire. Yeah. Yes. And now you're going to know her from the upcoming TV series, Gorilla, as Heather B. said, Gorilla. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, Gorilla. Co- also starring Idris Elba. Mm-hmm. Please welcome Frida Pinto. Oh. Frida! Thank you. That was amazing, Dan. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Frida, I couldn't help but notice you kind of nodding your head when we were playing that song earlier, that Black Boy Joy promo. And it, mm-hmm. it made me think, what, what kind of music do you normally listen to? I'm actually very open to listening to all kinds of music the only thing and you know not no disrespect for those who are into heavy metal it's the only thing that gives me a headache <laughs> but uh i mean we're talking about being honest right yeah right. I'll, okay, I'll, if I'll say that. okay yeah. cool yeah. Yeah. uh sorry heavy metal fans but but that's i'm, I'm being honest it's the mm-hmm. only thing that i cannot do but i um in fact on on working on gorilla mm-hmm. we had uh, a bunch of music that we were made to listen to to kind of get into the times, you know, the 70s and the, and the, and the saxophone and, and just like great sounds. And we had some live singers on, in one of the scenes that we have in episode one as well, uh, musicians. So for me, it's just great sounds. If it gets me moving, uh-huh. then uh-huh. I'm in a good place. So, so I wouldn't I wouldn't pinpoint and say it's just, just one person. No particular genre, just what sounds and Just what good. sounds and what feels good and what speaks to me. Gorilla, Heather, I don't know if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, mm-hmm. but but I watched the first episode. Oh, you have, okay. Okay, because I didn't want to watch the entire thing. No. Yeah, I wanted to kind of experience it as it happened. I When I watched it, it made me feel, I was born in the 70s, so I'm a 70s child. I know, thank you. I, I know, I know you're saying, wow, you look good for your age. Thank you, Frida. I know what's going on in your mind. <laughs> thank you, Frida. We're going to be honest. <laughs> And so I'm curious too, what was the music? Was it Marvin Gaye? Was it people from Marvin the UK? Gay. Was it who? Th- there were a lot of influences uh, um, from the American culture as well mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. in the 70s. But we did have um, a live band that, uh, I'm forgetting the father's name. It was a son actually who came on set mm-hmm. to perform his father's music mm-hmm. from back in the day. Uh, you know, they used to have a lot of, um, well, uh, just go back a little back to the history of England. There were a lot of, people that came from Jamaica, from the Caribbean, mm-hmm. from like uh, countries of Africa, from India. So you can only imagine the sounds that came mm-hmm. from all these different places. And there were a lot of local musicians and bands that really made it from back in the day. And some of them who probably are, might have world success and fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely, yes, for, for me, uh, because I play jazz Mitra, who comes from India, I brought my Ravi Shankar with me. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Ravi Shankar be- is this honest. great. Uh, no, no, you're being totally okay. honest. Probably like the uh, biggest artist. <laughs> who, biggest, biggest artist who passed away, whose daughters are uh, Nora Jones and Anushka Shankar. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Anushka Shankar is a sitar player. Ravi Shankar is a sitar player. Is, mm-hmm. Was a sitar player as well. There it is. Let's can we. Get Thank the you. Nice and that's what sample. you brought. Yeah. That's, what, that's what your character brought. That's what my, in my head, if when I was listening to music, I wanted to bring back a little bit of my culture, even mm-hmm. though she is British at this point in time. Uh, I wanted to retain some of my culture because that that is what diversity is all about: being open to not just different mm-hmm. colors of the skin, but different sounds and mm-hmm. different s- uh, sounds of voices as well. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so yeah, f- uh, but there was Marvin Gaye. You're right. There was a lot of that played on set uh, mm-hmm. for us to get into get into Jim Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see, see, watching that episode made me realize how um, ignorant I was to what was going on in parallel universes at the same time that you had you know, civil rights movement here in the States and, mm. and black people were fighting for equality and empowerment. Um, the same thing was happening in, in the England. UK. Mm-hmm. In- but don't feel too bad about being ignorant because okay. a lot of Brits are ignorant about it and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of us did not know about it. So mm-hmm. uh, I did not know about it either. It's not well documented. Like if it were well documented, we would probably know about it, right? Uh-huh. Also, there have not been a lot of movies that have been made about made about it. Almost in a way, like for me, it felt like the Brits did not want to talk about their not so glorious past uh-huh. uh, and you know, not face it. But you cannot not face something that has that has hap- that has happened a time in in history, which, by the way, keeps repeating itself over and over, over, and over again. again. So everything that you see about read about in your newspapers and on the internet with police brutality and acts of racism. It happened in 1971, England. It, 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 immigration. Immigration. It's, yeah. The biggest. It's, I mean, it's based around the 1971 Immigration Act. Yeah. The immigration Act. And it sounded like when listening, it was almost like it was, I could have been watching CNN or MSB or Fox News today here in the right. States. Mm. And it was the same reaction, right? Mm. The same conversation. Yeah. People having the same hurdles. Absolutely. And it, and it also, some of the things that our characters say feel like it's very timely. Like people are saying this right now. There's something that, Jazz says to uh, Kent, who played by Idris Elba, um, they're changing the laws on us. One day people are going to ask us what we did. I'm not going to tell them I sat on a fence. And you hear a lot of people saying that right now, you know, not these exact words, Mm -hmm. but to the tune, to that tune. Um, So, yeah, it's a very timely show. And I'm really excited about a couple of things. You know, first of all, of course, it's an education on Mm -hmm. what happened in uh, UK history, in UK's history. Um, and you'll see a lot of parallels because uh, we were very inspired by the Black Panther movement mm-hmm. that happened in America. Mm-hmm. But there were parallel movements in Germany. There was a Red Army faction. There was a movement in Japan and Canada. So it was pretty much all over the world in the 70s. You know, it's a very vocalized time um, in the world, in, in world history. But I'm also very excited that we get to explore a human relationship. Yeah. Because if you don't humanize, no one wants to know about numbers and politics. Then it's a documentary that does not interest anybody. Yeah. It's yeah. not entertaining either. Well, me and Sway actually got to watch some of the screeners. And we mm. were talking Lucky about... Lucky you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know people, Frida. Yeah. We know people. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I found interesting was... Um, I'm trying to think. The actor who played uh, Pence, uh, Rory uh, Kinnear. Rory Kinnear. Oh. Yeah, Rory Kinnear plays his cop, uh, Pence, who is kind of, I guess, like a sergeant or, or a captain Mm -hmm. and he sort of is the one who tells these cops he shows them a picture of one of the guys who's uh uh, protesting and that that they want to they actually go after this guy and basically beat the shit out of him until he dies yeah and what was interesting though was that later on you (laughs) realize that was so harsh it hurt me (laughs) well they show they show his face that's how it's done yeah Yeah. and then later on you realize that this guy is in an interracial relationship with a black woman Mm -hmm. and 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 it's like i don't mean to give it away but it's just sort of like is some of this based in truth or are there any stories that were borrowed from actual historical you know just so um, I, I, I can definitely verify that all the historical events are factual. Everything in that is factual are history and politics. That's totally factual. But the characters are, are, were, are fictional. But they're built in a way to kind of not make a black or white person. And by that, I don't mean color of the skin. Not black or white characters. Mm-hmm. But people in the gray because that's how they always are. This is documentary about the Iranian revolution that I watched when I was preparing for another film. And the police officer who is torturing in uh, the prison Evan, which is like the Guantanamo Bay of, of Iran, uh, he's he's torturing this this one guy for being autistic. And then his phone rings and he goes and picks up the phone and he's like, this is the, the guy who's torturing, the police officer is torturing. And he goes, um, yes, baby, I'll come home. I'll bring you the chocolates. I Just tell mommy to that I'll come home at this time and I'll wow. bring you your chocolates. Whatever your favorite chocolates are, they are yours. Okay, got to go back to work. And then he goes back to torturing this guy. Uh-uh. So wow. you, for us as human beings, we cannot forget that even those who we want to criminalize and demonize, that they, they do have gray in them. You mm-hmm. know, it's not just black or white. Um, and that's the and that's the magic of John Ridley. You know, he does not want to create the, the hero or the antihero. Uh, uh, so I just had one other question because we, we've had certain actors who come up to promote certain films that you know they, they deal with historical events whether it's you know uh, racial intolerance or indifference or resistance that kind of thing and 
here in the states, there's been a little bit of of pushback with certain people who don't want to see these kind of films. You know, they say they're tired of the slavery mm -hmm. film or they're tired of this kind of story that has to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, black people being, you know, uh, uh, treated badly and that sort of thing. Is is it the same in Europe and other parts of the world? Have you noticed like they don't really want to see any more of those kind of stories or are they more accepting of it? I wouldn't know what it is on a, uh, a larger scale, but I think we're definitely more open and diverse in that sense in Europe. I have to say there's openness, more openness than there is in America. One of the reasons why I think the show will work, and if I may say so, because I need to send some good vibes <laughs> to my show. It's a great show. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, is that it isn't about uh, America, you know, but it still is about America. It isn't about current times, but it still is about current times without actually putting it and shoving it in someone's face. It's not heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a little bit of separation from what is actually going on to address what is actually going on is so important or else you get normalized and desensitized. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens is what you're saying is, you know, it's it's hard for people to constantly be reminded that they were either tortured or that they've been the torturer. Yeah. Oh. Um, and sometimes you've got to step away a little bit in order to send messages out there. How how are, how, how similar are you to your character? Because it's Yaz, right? Jazz. Yes. Jazz Mitra, because yeah. she, for the cause. Power to the people. Power to the people. <laughs> We got to break out this political prisoner, and I'm going to slide a, a vial of broken glass <laughs> <laughs> inside of my vagina to pass it off to him. By the way, those things are well documented that those things did happen with uh, revolutionaries. It did not happen in England particularly or right. in this struggle. It might have happened in England. But these are acts com um, well committed by uh, revolutionaries in order to to you know create an action so, so that's not it's not unheard of so they would smuggle like you yeah. know tubes of broken glass yeah. hand it off to a guy uh, the political prisoner so he could eat the crushed glass and it could kind of destroy his colon and his cause, lining, yeah. and cause um, bleeding and they were able to break him out on his way to the ho once he got to the hospital, hospital. Wow. Are you a writer like that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that is John Ridley, right? That is that's totally no, that's John Ridley. I am I'm, I am very vocal and mm -hmm. I get into trouble for being vocal. I've never been backed up or pushed up against a wall mm -hmm. or felt that much pressure that I needed to do that in real life. Yeah. But I wouldn't <laughs> put that past anybody. You know, when you are back, and I and now understand this even more after reading a lot of uh, and meeting a lot of revolutionaries from from the 70s as well, who, by the way, guided us through the entire process. Dark as how Leela how and Farouk Dondi. Farouk Dondi was like my main uh, black power movement revolutionary mm -hmm. who I like reached out to for for information and, and knowledge. Uh, but when you're backed up against a wall and you're fighting for your family, you don't know what side of you is going to come out. And mm. I, I just say, you know, for people to think that you can be just black or white, that's not true. You never know. You never know. All right, Frida Pinto is here, ladies and gentlemen. You want to talk with her, 888-742-3345. We got the mystery sack, too, right? Yep. We'll get to know Frida a little better. Let's play in the morning, <laughs> Shade 45. Man, Frida Pinto is here. <laughs> Frida sound like a rapper. Jazz Mitra. <laughs> I think she really is. Yeah, yeah. Deep down the side, she, she, she got bars. Side, I know she's spitting some Kendrick <laughs> lyrics in the shower and stuff, but I already know she yeah, got something. Yeah, something in there, Sway. Something in there. Huh? We ain't going to explore uh, that too much unless she want to. Wonder, give me a beat. Let's see what happens. Oh, maybe <laughs> FP in the building. This, oh, well, um, that does happen. That does happen sometimes in real life as well. Yeah. Who yeah. who who was who, who was subjected to it? Who's yeah. subjected to it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like who? What rapper you is most quoted in in, in your singings when you're at home by yourself? Oh, what, what rapper do yeah. I quote? Yeah. I'm not really good at rapping. But Singer, yeah. I, 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 you <laughs> do don't you know one rapper. No, I do know rappers. I'm, okay. I'm like more Dizzy Rascal, you know. So I'm Dizzy like, Rascal. Wow. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, man, that's that's my brother that's from the UK. Is. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's my Dizzy Rascal. Rascal was like the um, front end of the grime scene, but mm -hmm. then he started going, you know, he started making bigger songs mm -hmm. and, and became a lot more mainstream. But right. when I go to the UK, that's who I hang out you with. You know, really? That's my dude. Oh. That's like my that's my brother. Well, you know, there's I, I think there is so much to be learned and discovered from London underground music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a friend who introduced me while I was in a film set with him. Oh, you might know him, guys. Riz Ahmed. 
who yeah, was yeah, in the yeah, night yeah, off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So he was supposed to be on the show. What happened? He came late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, came he came late. Came yeah. Typical, yeah. Indian. Yeah. Typical <laughs> Indian. Typical <laughs> <laughs> Indian. He was on um, <laughs> IT. He was he, promoting uh, Rogue One, the Star Wars uh, movie. Oh, yes, yeah, of but, course. But he wanted to perform right. songs from his album. Yeah. Yes. And he was on IP time. <laughs> <laughs> We call it uh, in India, the, you know, Indian Standard Time (IST). We call it Indian Stretchable Time. So okay, you know, you okay. can stretch it the way you want, and yes, it's still okay. allowed. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, no, I got introduced to like, some of the music that he started, you know, playing for me, and think, oh, this is this is this person, that person. I was like, oh wow, this, and I don't know who these people are, but mm -hmm. it's great music. So. Uh, yeah, educating myself. In fact, we have Ko Ko Koji. Koji, is that his name? But he's like doing the opening song for Gorilla. Okay. All right, yeah, good. Again, good. and UK. That's pretty London good. Like, uh, you see you see, Frida just going in. She's like, she's right. giving us facts, statistics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you took that really seriously. <laughs> but who do you sing in the shower, though? Yeah, tell us. <laughs> you guys, you're going to embarrass me. Um... Don't judge me because I've been me. judged by people before, but there are reasons why I <laughs> <laughs> I've been badly judged till I made this person listen to the entire album, Selena Gomez. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. okay. Selena's it's okay. real. I am actually not even embarrassed to say it because yeah. I feel like she, when she sings, she's putting her real emotions into it, and she's I real. feel it in the shower in the bedroom, uh -huh. the living room, and every other in the kitchen. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm feeling it, you know? And uh, um, I like that she's she's relatable. Yeah, Selena's real. See, we, we like what's real. Say what's yeah. real. <laughs> Tracy, you got a real question? I do. Frida. <laughs> oh, my middle name's Selena as well, by the way. Oh, oh boom. Okay. So many connections. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so last year, we saw how so many Hollywood issues came to a head with the Oscar So White campaign. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people felt like that was primarily driven by the black community. So I'm wondering, um, as a woman of color, as mm -hmm. an Indian woman, did you feel thoroughly represented with that? Yeah, you know, I have to say that when people just talk about uh, blackness, I don't like to look at it as color of the skin blackness. Uh, it's more about a political blackness. And mm. it's about who's on the side of the oppressor and the side of being oppressed. That's how I look at blackness. So no, totally underrepresented and not talked for and not talked about either. Uh, but that's what I'm here for, to make sure that the representation still stands strong and not representing without fact and without awareness. I think that for me is uh, um, actually more counterproductive uh, than <laughs> representing when you don't have your, your, your facts straight um, or something to really talk about, you know, something valuable. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I feel like there are community, there are S South Asian. And by the way, when I say Asian, you know, I'm Asian, people go, you don't look Asian. I'm like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Like India's part. Of, of the Asia. continent of Asia, yeah. so I'm Asian. Uh, so I do feel a South Asian and uh, Chinese, Korean, Southeast Asian, all those populations are not represented when you talk about diversity. And I don't believe you're even talking about diversity when you only talk about one color of the skin that happens to be closer to the color black. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Frida Pinto. Go ahead, Heather. This Go. is so not serious, and I'm almost embarrassed. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's jump out of serious. I love Let's her dress. Out, yeah. I had to tell her I saw her dress was fly. Let me see her it's, shoe game, though. Shoe hey. game on point. Oh, crazy wow. Oh, wow. Those some nice shoes. <laughs> but, Frida, please tell me about kick me in my forehead, Frida. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Panther training. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> tell me, because I'm fascinated with food, too. Tell uh, me about this raw coconut <laughs> butter that you've been snacking on. I'm like, yo, that would be so good, like, just dipping in and eating in it. I would give it? you some of that licked it. So I, I, like, I know I, I saw you lick, but it's okay. To myself. Um, raw coconut butter. So I'm like on this uh, press tour, press junket, and then you know you have not a lot of time to eat, and it's and you get starved. So yeah. I eat this full fat coconut butter. You hold that to up to keep so, me. So the see full fat but coconut. have you always eaten that? Or because I've never seen. Hey, it before. I grew up in India. That's a and cultural in, thing. And no, no, not coconut okay. butter. This oh. is like definitely more Americanized, mm -hmm. but. Uh, in India, you grow up eating coconut oil. Like the same thing with, have you heard of those turmeric lattes? Yeah. 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 Okay, Cold guys. First of all, we grew up eating turmeric in India. <laughs> yeah. you know? okay. Same thing with coconut. Like my food was always cooked in coconut oil. So it's kind of really fascinating when you come to America and you go, oh my God, my new trend, it's a turmeric latte. And I'm like, lady, <laughs> sister, done it all my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They call it golden milk. Golden milk. I'm like, yeah. And it's so expensive here. I'm like, I'll get you some turmeric Tum latte from India for like 50 pence. Ooh. Oh, 50 cents. That's good. Right. It's good for it's good for your your libido too. Turmeric, yeah. yeah, gets your you know 
get your name. You would know about that. I know about that. Tell us about it. That's why I drink it. All right, okay, so, okay, we got this. So nasty. We got this thing called the mystery sack, Frida. All our first time guests have to do this. Okay. It sways mystery sack on Shade 45. All right, you're going to. Right. Okay, Frida, it's really, really simple. You're going to stick your okay. hand in this I'm going to let all of you know whether he, if he really had turmeric this morning because my hand's going into a sack. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Damn, I missed you my see? shot. You got to no, pull he out. Did. Oh, he did. Hello. <laughs> You're going to read it out loud and you have to answer it honestly. Uh, okay. Who's your favorite person to follow on social media? Selena Gomez. (laughs) 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 Question number two. Pretty good. (laughs) That's so funny. You got to get a Selena song, too. Oh, yeah, please. We got it. Don't worry. (laughs) Question number two. How how would you tell a smelly friend their hygiene was off track? Uh, I have actually told people to their face that they need to invest in deodorants. And uh, <laughs> I love the way she says it. It just makes you feel more stinky. Like, <laughs> uh, just because I, I think you have to be. See, one of the things I don't believe in is, especially if you call that person your friend, is to not tell them the truth. I think that's being not a good friend. Okay. So yeah. I think you got to tell them that uh, it's not good uh, for the people around you to be smelling your smelly pits. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's, that's one. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess we got to start telling the truth in this room. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Okay. What's the point then? Okay. If you if you could have been casted in any one movie, which would you have wanted and why? Mm. Uh, one that I've like seen in recent times. <laughs> I don't know, but I just love Amy Adams and everything. I thought uh, she was amazing in Arrival. Uh-huh. Uh, mm. And I guess I'll have to, you know, get to somewhere else in my career to actually. But, yeah, Amy Adams, Amy I would Adams. say. Did you see Arrival? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's pretty good. I mean, it, a lot good of people movie. might think it's just an alien movie, but it was actually pretty deep. I mean, it got nominated for Best Picture. So no, that, that was movie. actually one of my favorite movies, and yeah. I really was rooting for her as well. I just, yeah, it's such a, I mean, I saw it early on in Toronto, and I just kind of felt that it was not just an alien movie, right? You, like you said. But you know what's so, what was so fascinating about it is that this alien they think it's an alien abduction, and you know, as soon as you see uh, spaceships, everyone's like, "Oh, God, uh-huh. we're in danger! Like, help us!" But what they actually come to do is to save to, te- to save you, yeah, yeah, to tell you to listen to well, one another. Oh, you ru- oh, she, she, she ruining the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know they know oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, because, hey, because Wonder was gonna go see that tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, you should watch it last year. Sorry, not my. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I read that Monster was a big movie for you, come, yes. like uh, yes. getting into acting. Yes, um, because it. For me, I mean, I was always uh, a dramatic child, and my parents would be shocked if I became a doctor or something else. They were like, "This is scary for your patients." <laughs> but, uh, but for me, acting was always a thing, but never the thing that I thought I would make a living out of. And then I watched Monster, and what I really liked about it, it was that Charlie Theron, this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful woman, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. let herself be transformed into this character and like threw herself into it. Mm-hmm. So for me, the transformation of people in order to breathe life into other people's stories and characters for me is like it's beautiful it's almost like a godlike feeling without feeling you know like god uh-huh. but you're breathing life and making making them real Yo, this has been extremely pleasant yeah. to have you Absolutely. on the show, Frida. Aww, thank you. It turned out to be a better experience for us than it was for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, hey, it was, <laughs> I like my experience. Yeah, Let okay, me speak good. for myself. Okay, great, great, well, what, great. Did we, did we live up to the expectations? You that absolutely this is, did, okay, but okay, I had a question, so I don't get to put my hand in your sack the next time. Yeah, uh, actually. <laughs> because you said first time people okay. only. Yeah, well, you get to put your hand in my sack whenever you see me. Thank How about that? Much. All right, Frida. Thank you very much. Okay, Frida Pinto, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Gorillas <laughs> premiering Sunday, April 16th at 9. 9 p.m. on Showtime. <laughs> you want to follow her on social media? How can they follow you? Uh, just Instagram. That's all I am. I'm, mm. I'm not a big social media person. Okay. I stalk. I don't I don't post. <laughs> okay, you don't post. And the Instagram address is? Oh, at Frida Pinto. F-R-E-I-D-A. Okay, cool. This song is for you. Let's see if you can guess the name of it. it uh, oh, who is it by? I don't know. Is it Selena Gomez? You got it. It's Sway in the Morning. Only on Shade 45.